So it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our next speaker, Professor Ademir Pazotto from Universidad Federal do Rio de Janeiro, and who will be talking about Kalman estimates for the heat and the Schrodinger equation on a tree. Okay, thank you, Luis. Okay, first, I'd like to thank the organizers, Felipe and Hermano, for giving me this opportunity. And this talk, or my talk, is based on a joint work with, on a joint paper with Livio Ignat from Romania and Lionel Rossier from France. Okay? And in this work, we are interested in some questions related to Karliman inequalities and their applications to an inverse problem for the heat and the Schrodinger equation with a stationary potential P. Both models, heat and Schrodinger, are considered on, the one dimension, on a one-dimensional network given by the edges of a tree. So, to begin with, let me briefly give you an example of a tree that can be considered in our analysis, okay? First, we choose a exterior vertex, call it the root of the tree, okay? And then, as you can see, then we denote the corresponding edge by E1. Then, as you can see, the remaining edges and nodes are defined by induction, okay? And here, in our analysis, we consider two sets of vertex, okay? The interior vertex and the exterior ones, okay? And it's also important to say that the study of partial differential equations on networks arises in the context of, of quantum graph that I will define more precisely later, okay? But roughly speaking, a quantum graph is a metric space equipped with a differential operator, in this case, the Laplacian, okay, that can be written as the union of disjoint, many disjoint intervals, okay? Here, we have the operator Laplacian, okay? U, P, H, and U0 are collections of functions, okay, that solves the problem in some edge of the tree. And Yes, here is the operator Laplacian defined on the network. And the main interest is in deriving a Karlman estimate in a situation like that is its direct application, okay, to, to prove the stability of an inverse problem related to the determination of the stationary potential P. Okay? Introducing, okay, determination, introducing some measurements in the external nodes of the tree, here denoted by the boundary of gamma, of, I mean, introducing some measurements on the external nodes of the tree, okay? For the Schrodinger equation, <laughs> we can make the same analysis, okay? But here, due to some technical difficulties, we can prove the result only on a star-shaped tree. I mean, in this case, we are able to prove the result on a, in star-shaped tree. There is, in this case, there is only one external node at which all the edges meet. Right? And both systems are closed with some <laughs> coupling continuity condition that I will define later. Okay? So, as I told you, here we are strongly motivated by the study of an inverse problem related to the determination of the stationary potential P. And in general, that kind of problem relies on the proof of an inequality involving two solutions associated to two different potentials, more precisely. Okay? If you denoted by UP and UK the solutions associated to the potentials P and Q, okay, by means of Karlman inequalities, we can derive an inequality like this one, okay? where C is a positive constant and E is, denotes the set of all stereo vertex of, um, of gamma. Okay? And uh, I think that uh, the results obtained under um, some classical conditions in the sense that this condi the, the, the conditions are, I'm referring here were introduced before for the study of some related problems on a bounded domain. Okay? And the idea of studying inverse problem by means of Karlman estimates was, were in, was introduced by Bukjen and Klibanov in 1981. In fact, since then, there has been many works that use the same methodology, okay? And what's a Karlman estimate? Well, a Karlman estimate is an L2 weight estimated that depends a large parameter S. And in general, this parameter is very important in the applications, but here it's also very important on how to choose 
the weight function for the Carlin estimate. Okay? This is, by, by the way, this is the main difficulty here. Because recall that we are dealing with a collection of functions, okay? And this function should fulfill some continuity conditions on the internal vertex of the network. And again, for the Schrödinger equation, it will be taking some, uh, sim some, we can prove uh, similar inequality. I mean, here we, we are also interested in, in, in the application to an inverse problem related to the determination of the stationary potential P. Okay, again, we use the approach introduced by Bukijen and Klibanov, okay, that make use of Karlman estimates. But here we have, we have problem to control some bad term related to the internal nodes of the tree. Therefore, we are able, we were able to obtain the result only in a particular case, okay, on a star shaped tree. Okay, and in this case, there is only one external node at which all the edges meet. Okay, and okay, <laughs> many other works use the same strategy. Okay, okay, to study the study of Carlman estimate of inverse problem bar means of Carlman estimate, and a complete list is too long to be given here. Therefore, just to make some connections, I should mention some works. Okay, related to the study of inverse problems on a network, particularly. I refer to the works of Boudouin, Crepeau, and Valen. Here, they study the inverse problem for the wave equation on a general tree. But they also present a quite a nice complete review on the state of art on the subject. Okay? And, well, <coughs> just, to fix, just to, fix, to fix the notation before going into the main questions of, of the paper, of this work, I recall some basic facts regarding quantum graph. Well, what's a, a quantum graph? It's a metric space equipped with a differential operator, okay? And equipped with the differential operator that can be written as the union of finitely many intervals. In this case, these intervals are compact, okay? And any two of these intervals are disjoint or they intersect only at one of their endpoints. Okay, and quantum graphs. Okay, the, this is not only the there is several applications, but quantum graphs appears as, as simplified mathematical models models when we consider the propagation of waves of different nature. Okay, and here we consider a planar graph where V is the set of vertex, E is the set of edges. Okay. The edges are assumed of finite length, and their ends are the vertex of V. And we identify each edge with a compact interval 0L. Okay? We also identify each function U with a collection of functions. Okay? And each, I'm sorry, and each, each UE okay, in the collection is defined on a corresponding compact interval. And you say that a function we is continuous if and only if it, con it is continuous at the vertex of gamma, and it ue that appears here in the collection are continuous in the corresponding compact set. Okay. So in this context, we can define the, L the LP spaces. I mean, it is the set of all functions in LP that all functions that belongs to LP for all. Add e. We can also define the corresponding Sobolev spaces, and here H10 is the set of all functions in H1 that vanishes at all exterior vertex of the network. And using or following the ideas introduced by Cataneu, we can also define the operator Laplace on the network. Okay? And here, the idea is to introduce all vertex conditions that makes the operator self-adjoint, for example. And one of the most standard types of such boundary conditions are the so-called Kirchhoff conditions. Okay? And here, the sum is taken over all edges that contains the vertex V. So, under these conditions, we can define a linear, unbounded, self-adjoint, and dissipative operator in L2. Okay? Okay, for more 
information on this topic, I refer to these very nice papers of Exner and Cushman. Okay. So, having all these definition, definitions in mind, we can focus on the main part of this work. I mean, the proof of Carlin estimate for uh, the heat equation. Okay, but it's important to say that the <laughs> the theory of Carlin estimate for parabolic equations in, in general has been largely developed since the work of Fursikov and Imanovilov. In fact, since 19, no, yes, of Fursikov, yes, yes. And it has been applied to many different situations. And again, a complete list is too long to be given here. Therefore, okay, I refer to this review paper uh, of Masashiro Yamamoto, okay, where he presents a very good complete, uh, represent a good review on the state of art until 2009. Okay, here. In, in our work to obtain our main theorem, I think the proof of the Carlin estimate for the heat equation, we follow some ideas introduced by Lionel Rossier and Bin Jun Zhang for the study of no controllability for the complex Ginzburg Landau equation. Okay. And our Carlin estimates we derive the four functions in the space Z. Some, we, are, we consider some regular functions that fulfill conditions one, two, and three. Okay. Condition one is related to some continuity conditions, uh, con condition at the internal nodes of the tree. Second, second condition is related to Kirchhoff condition. Okay, this condition allows us to give a, a, a precise definition of the Laplace on, on the network. And we also assume that the function vanishes in all external vertex of the tree. Okay. We can also, okay, we also introduce some uh, weight functions that to play a very important role in our Carlin estimate. So observe that psi, okay, phi and theta depends on psi, okay? In, in, I mean, this, in some sense, we can say that uh, this kind of weight function is classical when when one is interested in the study of Carlin estimate for parabolic equations, okay? And it stopped working. Nah. Okay, thank you to introduce our main theorem. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is our main theorem. Okay, it's a real piece of cake. Okay, in fact, we proved that there exists a wave function, psi, defined on gamma, such that, and two parameters, s and lambda, such that for s and lambda sufficiently large, okay, this inequality holds for all function q in the space z. Okay, first observe that we obtain the inequality here, the, the Carlin estimate with positive sign, okay? But this is done only to simplify the computations, okay? Similar conclusions will obtain the same estimated by changing T into capital T minus T, okay? This is done only to, to make the computations easier, okay? Observe that here we introduce two parameters, S and lambda. In general, only one parameter is sufficient to derive a Carlin estimate in dimension one. But this, it was done only to simplify the, the construction of the wake function. I told you this is the, the main difficult of the, the work, okay? And observe that, that theta and psi appears here, here, okay, this is the, the wake functions that I introduced, that were introduced before, okay? The proof of these inequalities is rather technical. I'd like to, I want to avoid the tech, I will avoid the technicalities, but I'm going to show you only one of the, the main points of the proof, the proof, the part of the proof in which we are forced to choose the wave function, okay? So first, we consider the operator P and the weighted function uh, phi that was introduced later, okay? Then for all function Q in the spaces E and any positive S, we make a change of variable, Okay, and you compute W, W. 
And the first part of the proof consists in a decomposition to obtain a, a decomposition of W in two operators, a self-adjoint operator and a skill adjoint operator, right? And uh, we are interested in deriving an, uh, an inequality in L2, a weighted inequality in L2. So the next, so the ne next thing to do is to take the L2 norm of W and apply the parallelogram rule, okay? And so this, the norm of M1 and M2 does not bring any problem to our computation. So the next steps of the theorem are devoted to estimate the terms in blue, okay? If you read the papers of Fusikov, Manilovilov, Yamamoto, Yamamoto, and many other papers, you've, you will see that the people follow the same approach. I mean, there is nothing new at that point of the proof, okay? Except the decomposition of the operator W, in, of, um, except for the decomposition of W in two operators, M1 and M2, okay? So as I told you, the rest of the proof are devoted to estimate these terms. So, and the first thing to do is an exact computation of the product of M1 and M2. And in this case, we use, we use a direct method in the sense that it is based only on integration by parts and a suitable grouping of the terms according to the parameter that appears in the inequality, okay? Nothing else, okay? But here, when we do that, some bad terms appear, some terms related to the internal nodes of the network, okay? due to some integration by parts. And we are forced to choose the wake function, okay? Even in this case, okay, we can take, in, we can, we can take phi alpha to be affine, where A alpha and B alpha are positive and satisfy several conditions, but it's not important at that point, okay? Okay, here we are forced to choose some, uh, uh, to define who is psi in order to control some terms related to the internal nodes of the network. Okay, and now the rest of the proof, okay, are devoted to estimate the integral along the, the edge, okay, to devoted to estimate the integral terms, okay, and this is one of, this is, I mean, the, the, main, the main part of the proof, okay. So, as a consequence of the previous inequality, we can prove, of the previous theorem, we can prove the inequality that I presented in the, in the first slides. Okay, As, <coughs> and here we denote by UP and UQ the solutions corresponding to the potentials P and Q, okay? The constant C that appears here depends on R, depends on M, and depends, depends also on the time derivative of U in the, the norm, in the, nor the L infinite norm of the time derivative of the solution, L infinite norm of UT. Okay, as I told you, this, these assumptions are, are technical, but they are classical in the sense that they were introduced in the literature for the study of some related problems on a bounded domain. Okay, this is especially this one. This is a technical condition and it's part of the approach introduced by Bukchen and Klibanov. Okay, <coughs> and the ingredients used in the proof can be obtained, can be found in this paper, the, view, the, in the review paper of Masashiro and Yamamoto. And <laughs> the idea is, is the following, okay? We consider the two solutions, WP and WQ, and then you take the difference, okay? And the difference satisfies this problem, where F is the function to be estimated in L2, and R is the solution, okay, associated to the poten stationary potential P, okay? Now, we differentiate the, the equation with respect to T, and we apply the Carlin estimation for UT instead of U, okay? We apply the, Car this is the, we, we, what we obtain when we apply the Carlin estimate for UT, okay? And then, well, when we derive the, 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 the equation with respect to T, we rewrite, we have to rewrite the terms that appears on the right-hand side of the equation, okay? But this idea is, is, is the same. And then the second step, in the second step, we, we replace here the terms that appears on the right-hand side of the equation, okay? And we end up with this estimate, 
Okay? Okay? And the application of the Carlin estimate finishes here. Okay? In fact, all we need is that these terms, these three terms, are less than this one. Okay? The application of the Carlin estimate, we will take the difference. Okay? The difference satisfies some, <coughs> some boundary value problem. Okay? We differentiate and apply the Carlin estimate for UT. Okay? This is all we need. Okay? So, to conclude the proof, we first have to prove this inequality, and it is obtained thanks to the assumptions that appears in the statement of the theorem. By the way, here we have to choose T0, the T0 that appears, we have to take T0 equal capital T over 2. Okay? And the wave function that appear, appears in the inequality should attain the maximum at T0 over 2. This is also a trick, and it's part of the approach introduced by Bukjen in Klebanov. Okay, the wave function that appears in the inequality should attain the maximum at t over two. Okay, so the second inequality is just replacement and the application of uh, holder inequality. And here we have a, also a technical trick. Okay, we have to choose to write this term as a derivative in time, okay? Then we exchange the derivative in the integral, we compute the derivative and apply uh, holder inequality, okay? This is done only to introduce the terms that appears on the left-hand side of the Carlin estimate, okay? And then we appears the Carlin estimate, I mean, we appears the previous inequality, and we end up with this estimate, okay? And now we take S sufficiently large, and the rest of the proof we bring. I'm sorry. We take S sufficiently large. We, we bring the terms for the left-hand side of the inequality, and the rest of the proof I, it's, is devoted to play with the, the exponential and, and the weighted function. Okay? But this is, is the, the main steps of the proof. Okay? And for the, for the Schrodinger equation, we can obtain the same result, and this is the initial boundary value problem that you have to consider to derive the Carlin estimate. The first condition is related to, some, to the continuity condition at the external node. Okay? This condition is related to the Kirchhoff condition. I mean, he, with this condition, we can define the operator Laplace on, on the network. And here, we will also assume that the function vanishes in all exterior vertex of the network. Okay, again, there is a long list of reference for Carleman estimates for the Schrodinger equation. Okay, here this list of authors, of course, is not complete. I just mentioned the authors who we have consulted when the work was in progress. Okay, but to obtain the result, we follow some ideas introduced by Mercado, Ossias, and Leonel Rossier when they were interested in deriving some Carlin estimate for the Schrodinger equation on a bounded domain in dimension two. Okay? Again, the Carleman estimate will be derived for the function Q in for the functions Q in the space Z, and they are also regular functions that fulfill the previous boundary conditions. Okay? The wake functions are essentially the same. It's for specialists in in, in Carleman for both models, it's a little bit strange, but here the, we can consider basically the, the same wake function. In this case, we can even take phi alpha to be affine again. But here the, the problem is much more difficult in the sense that we have to derive a family of weighted functions. Okay? But even in this case, we have some problems to control some terms related to the external nodes, and therefore the result was obtained only in a particular case, on a star shaped tree. I mean, in this case, there is only one external node at which all the ads meet, right? Okay, this is our main theorem, okay, well, related to the Schrodinger equation. In fact, we prove that there exists a family of weighted functions. And again, two parameters, S and lambda, such that for when S and lambda are sufficiently large, we obtain that this inequality holds for all function Q at the space Z. Right? And as a consequence, as a direct application of the Carlin inequality, we can prove the second identity, that, uh, second inequality that I introduced in, in the first slides. 
Again, the result is obtained un under some technical, very technical conditions, but in some sense, classical. Okay? Classical, that, as, as I told in the sense that were introduced for the study of related problems on, on a bounded domain. Okay? Here, the, again, UP and UQ denote the solutions associated to the potentials P and Q. Okay, the constant C depends on capital R, small r, and depend M, and depends also on the time derivative, the norm of the, the time derivative of the solution in L infinite of space and time. Okay, and uh, to finish, I'd like to mention some <coughs> open problems, and for specialists in inverse problem, this is maybe the first question, see if it's possible to reduce the number of measurements at the boundary. Okay? The second problem is related to the Schrodinger equation. We don't know how to extend the result for a general tree. Okay? And another history interesting question is uh, whether we can obtain similar result with more, much more, gener with much more, no, more general coupling conditions. Okay? Not only the Kirchhoff conditions. Okay? So, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention.